Manor. Do I have a motion in order to uh, open up the meeting uh, for the Town Call Manor? I'll make that motion as stated. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, this meeting is now in order. Thank you all very much. Um, we will get started with the meeting with a Pledge of Allegiance um, to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, now and if we could take a moment of silence for those shut in and so, so many tragedies that have been faced throughout the country and throughout the world, um, whether being natural tragedy or deliberate tragedy. Let's have a moment of silence. Okay, so now can we have a moment of silence to appreciate all the blessings that we have in the world, the good things, good families, friends, and breathing. Take a moment. Okay, thank you. Okay. We are to have a guest this evening. First of all, I want to ask, is, does the um, council need any additions to this agenda? Um, no, I'm fine with it. Okay, so we have a guest this evening. Um, Naclaire Jones. Oh, she's not here yet. Oh. Okay. Um, Okay, so whenever she gets here, then we'll, we'll just we'll move the agenda right around. Thank you. I thought you were not going to be able to make it tonight, but <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, mayor, marriage report. Wait a minute, I'm missing something. Oh, that's what's the report from the work session. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll start out with the marriage report. Got a bit to report here. Um, been a pretty busy week. Um, I attended the fall conference, and the fall conference was an excellent conference of the Merlin Municipal League. The conference, um, at the conference, um, we did a lot of um, direct work on how do we testify in Annapolis when we're testifying on matters um, of the items that we are, are really trying to get for our communities. And there's been some focus um, at the MML in relationship to um, our highway users tax, which um, funds, which actually were slashed pretty badly several years ago. And we've been working really hard to get those funds back. And so we'll be testifying um, on getting that um, back up. And also we've been working on broadband. Um, there's a lot of places people don't understand, don't have any access to broadband um, in parts of the state. That doesn't directly affect us, but we have to be on board with things that affect other, you know, members in order for them to be on board for things that affect us. So we've been working hard on that. But it was a really good um, uh, session in exercise, and also the networking is always great. Um, at that meeting, um, the Maryland Mayor's Association had their meeting, and I am the secretary of the Maryland Mayor's Association, and um, therefore reported back on that. Uh, the the uh, governor actually came um, to a meeting. It was the only session that the governor actually visited was ours, and um, so that was a good thing to happen in order to um, build some relationships with him. I had a meeting with Angela Alsebrook. Um, if you don't know, Angela Alsebrook is actually running for county executive. She requested the meeting um, with me, and um, we had a wonderful conversation. Um, I was pretty impressed with the work that she's done um, in the Justice uh, Department, or 
as, as a state's attorney in Prince George's County and her focus on um, stopping people from going to jail rather than just arresting them to go to jail. And she's put a lot of programs in place I was very impressed with. Um, I also met with um, Senator um, Muse who also requested a meeting with me in relationship to he's running for county executive as well. And I was also very impressed with him, um, with some of the things in his background and some of the things that he understood our communities um, from actually um, growing up in a, um, a difficult um, life as a foster child and his understanding of things that might be going on in our community. So I was impressed with that as well. So at some point, I'll probably make an endorsement one way or another. I also understand that um, former Congressman Edwards is also running, um, but we don't know yet who. And hopefully we will have a forum for the candidates later on in 2018 um, so that our residents have an opportunity to come up and talk and ask questions. So I'm really looking forward to us um, putting something together like that. Um, I have been attending the Black Mayors um, Association. This month, um, the conversation was primarily around cannabis or others that call it marijuana. Um, and the fact that you know Maryland has uh, legalized medical marijuana and there's several um, distilleries or whatever they call them that are being built now in order to, um, there's several levels from where they make it, um, where they distribute it from, and then where they sell it from. And, and there's a number of these places that are gonna be coming up in, in Prince George's County. Um, and I know one will be close to Landover Hills and one will be close to um, um, Camp Springs. So um, anyway, there's a lot of uh, fervor going on around about the matter of these things. But the gentleman that, that was there was explaining how much security they put onto these projects and where they are and how they're handled and how people are checked and make sure that things are handled properly and, and that there, it is not just that they don't just do it randomly, that they really put a lot of effort into how this is happening. And if anybody wants any additional information um, on what I learned, um, please get in contact with me and I'll let you know. Um, we are happy to announce that we have hired a circuit writer, which is paid for by the state of Maryland. We are sharing this circuit writer with the town of, Cod uh, the town of North Brentwood and the town of Fermont Heights. Um, they both will have that circuit writer for two days a week and we will have the circuit writer for one day a week. We're hoping that by having this circuit writer and improve how many grants that we can get, it will also help improve um, getting more of our, um, get, getting our grants administered in a more timely fashion, and also um, in helping um, with the policies and procedures that are outdated and need to be updated. So those are the primary things that we'll have the circuit writer working on. We're very excited. Um, she will start with us next Friday. Her name is Jacqueline Goodall. Um, and um, so we're looking forward to her getting started. Myself and the other mayors I had an extensive process. There were 17 <coughs> resumes that we received. We interviewed five people, and so we came down to um, her. As, uh, so that was a pretty uh, lengthy process, but we got it done. Um, I also want to announce, and the chief can actually give us a little bit more information on this, because I just recently heard that we got an award for our knock and talk um, um, process program with um, the police. And so, Chief, you will give us more information yes, on that when we talk? Okay. Oh, good, good. Um, we attended Veterans Day. It was a beautiful day. Um, I yes. want to reiterate our thankfulness to all of our, our vets. I know we have one sitting there in the audience right now, Dorita Epps. Thank you for your service. Thank and you so um, yes. in. And Huh? Mr. Oh, and Mr. Ed, yes, Muchler, thank you for your service. I'm not missing somebody. <laughs> and it was, um, it was a beautiful day, um, and we did it at the Peace Cross as we usually do. And if anybody who doesn't know, we always have Veterans Day at the Peace Cross mm -hmm. every year. So if you don't know, just yeah, you put that on your calendar. It is a regular, it always happens, and we know that the Peace Cross will always be there, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So um, the uh, we had a a video was done by Tracy Stone, um, the chief of police. It's a beautiful video. It's one minute on Facebook, 
and it has over 4,000 views at this point. And so we're really excited to see that it's being shared all over the place, it's bringing a lot of attention to our website. I want to thank Council Member um, Mendoza, who also put up pictures in the website on a beautiful day at the Peace Cross, and that was a really great uh, video. So check out the video if you haven't. It's on our YouTube page as well. So um, there was a green team meeting, um, and I'm sure that the green team uh, will give us a little bit more information on it. I'll just speak about the fact that we have, um, uh, I have the assignment of trying to get to the owner of the shop of the shopping center to make sure that they're recycling. And so that's my task is to um, get to that. I have already spoken to them about it. They said they were going to make the upgrades, and so I want to just check the status of that. Um, I also want to mention, um, we did a mailing. I am so excited about the fact that um, we have fought PEPCO on the tree issue and cutting down the trees. Um, we actually went out and walked the streets with them to all of the trees. The delegates were with us when we did so. Um, we in all, um, uh, what do I want to say, uh, compromise work with them on the trees that seem to really be a serious problem to say they can go. There were about six trees that were taken off of the list because of our walkthrough. Then on top of that, um, I did a mailing to everybody who personally was having a tree taken out of their yard and uh, asking that they request a tree because legally we can request a tree if they take a tree. So all of our trees that they're taking, which I think is about 15, will be replaced. Um, and right now we've got about 60% of the residents of the town who got the form that I sent asking for a replacement tree. So I actually think we've done so much better than any town because most towns are not doing this at all. So we're going to wind up with all, all of our trees replaced. I just have to reach park and planning because there's about 15 on the list from park and planning mm -hmm. and see if we can get park and planning to say yes also replace their trees. And, and so we're also looking for a, to, uh, potentially a contest in the future for us to beautify the stumps that are left behind. But I'll let the green team give you a little more on that. I want to mention that um, I'm, I, I went to a meeting about the Peace Cross in Bladensburg um, where residents came out and spoke about um, their um, opinion of the Peace Cross. If you have not heard, which I think it would be hard to not have heard, that there was a ruling for the Peace Cross to be removed um, and the, um, the um, in 2015, it was ruled that it was not unconstitutional. Most recently, it was ruled that it is unconstitutional. Now, the governor is fighting it. Maryland National Capital Park and Planning is fighting it. Um, I have offered my personal view that it is not a religious symbol. It is a memorial to World War I. And, um, and so I attended that meeting to continue for us to all work together and push forward. It's on a stay right now and until it's suspended stay until we hear more about an appeal. I want to mention something to you guys that I don't think you probably have heard because it wasn't new to me um, just this week. There is an interest for a company to build a hyperloop. A hyperloop is a high speed um, vehicle that travels um, through a tube and they are looking to build uh, go underground to build this high-speed um, tube um, through the county and um, what I read was that the governor had approved for them to move forward I thought that was really odd I'm still trying to learn a little bit more about it I read some articles about it but I want everybody to listen for it because we've heard a whole lot about the Meglev, and Meglev is also a high-speed um, vehicle, um, which actually operates off, off of hovering over air. They're also proposing to um, build that high-speed. The Hyperloop goes about 500 miles per hour, and the Meglev goes about 300 miles per hour. Um, and so I just, we know about Meglev. We've been hearing about Meglev for a while now, but Hyperloop is new and it's to fully tunnel under. But what we don't need is both happening at the same time. So I'm confused, <laughs> you know? So whatever is going on. I will say for Meglev, just for everybody's information, all three options they have, tunnel under Colmar Manor. Um, wow. I don't know how I feel about it right now. We are designed to tunnel under is the ball fields, not under our homes, um, but all three. All three. 
So if you got an opinion about it, I'd say keep your ears open and, and listen to what's going on. There's meetings usually all over the place if you want to um, try to step in and, and get to know what's going on in both of those cases. Um, I also want to mention we had our legislative dinner. It's been a really busy month. The legislative mm -hmm. dinner, which was held here, and we focused on um, priorities that the Port Towns priorities, um, affordable housing, um, homelessness, and um, the need for assisting people in economic situation, transportation issues, which included conversation about the maglev, and also about the intersection at the Peace Cross that um, everyone's been trying to get it to a T-shape for a long time. Um, we talked about nonprofit support because nonprofit support help as a safety net when people are having challenges and problems, but they need funding, and also about the broadband access. Um, mostly in my focus is that I would really like to have um, free internet in town. Um, it might mean um, we pay a little bit more to everybody so that everybody has access. But um, I've, I've talked to a couple of, uh, I've, I've, talk, I've spoken briefly to Comcast and to Verizon about having a conversation about it. Um, I am finding that when people can't afford internet, they can't get information. And if they can't get information, then they don't know what's going on. And if they don't know what's going on, they can't stay connected and they can't get the help they need. Internet is critical these days. So um, a part of that was a part of that conversation. Okay, open house. Um, oh, let me come back to that in a second. I wanna talk about my mailing. So as you all know, we sent out a mailing to all of the households in the community. And this mailing included a, a form to enter all the contact information for the people in your household and that's so we can stay connected to you and let you know what we know. Um, things that I'm talking about, like the Mevla train and meetings that they're having or about the other items or any other economic thing, we can just let you know about these things quickly. Um, we also had near a list of all of our events that we know going forward and over the next year, so please come out and join us. There is a scholarship form in there, so if you have a young person who's about ready to go to college, that scholarship form will be due in January, so um, that was in the mailing. And then we also have a list in there, uh, uh, an item in there about you registering your car to the town of Comore Manor. Um, in a lot of cases, the registration says Brentwood. Brentwood is the zip code, simply the zip code because the post office is in Brentwood. But this is the town of Comore Manor and a portion of the funding from that comes to the town. And when it says Brentwood, there's good chance that we don't get the funding, Brentwood gets our funding. And so we're trying to encourage everybody um, because, and come January, we're going to be doing residential um, stickers for our cars. And this is for us to ensure that people are registered here as a resident. So if you're parking on the street in a residential um, designated area, you have to have a tag registered to Como Manor. Um, we will be talking in the future about a registration requirement as it is now for the state of Maryland. It states that if you move in the state of Maryland, you have how many days? 60 days, 60 days to change over your ticket. So I'm hoping to put, pass an ordinance where it also says by the time you move in Comer Manor, you have 60 days to change to Comer Manor. So we'll be working on that in the future. Um, and that was the, and the reason I did the mailing, I've got a question been asked, you know, as far as the mailing that went directly to households with addresses on it. The bulk mailing that we normally send out just says out residence, and it's bulk mail, and it's not to a specific address. The idea was is that I wanted to connect directly with the people in a particular house and not something that's just random to everyone in the community. The forms that you receive actually have your address on it. Um, and so every, everyone that was sent was specific to an address and there was no generic ones. Now on the front page on some of them actually had an address where some of them didn't because we found it easier to stuff the envelopes when we did that. So we just, that, but there was still no generic ones that went out. I want to point out, somebody mentioned that there was a double mailing. There was not a double mailing. There was one street that got um, two. And that's only because when we sent it out, we were checking off the list and, st and that little stack got put in before it got checked off the list and so they wind up getting the second mailing. I did think it might wind up being the second mailing, but I said it was better for them to get two than to get zero. And so um, that's the reason why there was one block 
that where um, several of them got um, double letters, but that's it. It didn't go out to everybody. I also want to mention, based on information I've heard about us putting so much work on the employees in order for us to do this, I did most of this work. I did the letters. I printed the letters. I translated the letters to Spanish. Um, I did all the information that went into those letters. So no, I did not have staff time doing all of that um, work. And I think that it's for an important reason so that we can reach people and be contacted. Um, the staff did help me in actually stuffing the envelopes, but that's about all that there was. So I just really want to put that out there that that's clear to anyone who might be assuming things they are not uh, aware of, in fact. Um, so the next thing, oh, I want to talk about economic help. I'm very, very concerned um, in things that I'm hearing. Um, people having challenges um, keeping up with their utility bills and um, water, gas, electric, and things like that is about to get cold. Um, even some people commented to me about them getting the mailing, where they said, well, if it doesn't say shut off notice and it doesn't say, you know, pass, it's due, it goes into the, the half pal. And so that's an indication that a lot of people are struggling an awful lot. And I want to make sure that everybody knows economically what is available out there at least. There is assistance out there if you're having some challenges with your utilities. You can call dial 211, dial 211 in most cases to find out where you can get assistance. You, need, you should do it before you get cut off. When you're feeling that it's going to happen and you're coming down that line and you're struggling, do it then because it takes a little time for them to roll through the system to check out whatever and get the money to the utility. Um, they might not have the full amount you owe when they give it to you, so you have an opportunity to try to work on matching it. So if you know you're having the challenge, do it now and start now. Um, I also want to make sure that um, people are aware of there's an agency called the Community Crisis Center. Um, if you need more information on that, that's just if, and that's for anything, if you're feeling like suicide, depressed, um, something of that nature. You can call here and get that information. I meant to write the number down, but I, I, I didn't. Um, I want to make sure all homeowners realize that you're eligible for a homestead tax credit. That tax credit is about 20% uh, of what your entire um, you, um, tax bill is. And so if you're an ex a homeowner um, with a uh, owner-occupied household, you have a right to that credit and you should consider that. And I know a lot of people who have not done that. There's also a homeowner's property tax credit. And that property tax credit is also, is based on income base, but some, a lot of people may be eligible for it. And so consider looking into it and call here if you need any help um, in getting to know more about it. I want to mention that, um, I did this one, and I'm so sorry this is long, but this is all very important stuff. <laughs> the Department, Maryland Department of Human Resources has energy assistance and their number is 301-909-7000. Um, and lastly, I want to mention that right hands for left hearts. We'll be having um, the fourth annual holiday dinner here on December 25th, Christmas Day. And um, for anybody you know who is going to be in need of being fed, please bring them out. They also need help and assistance in, in pulling it off. We are so, so uh, proud of um, Teresa Epps, who's the one that started this program, and her mom, Doretha Epps, who's going to continue it for her while she's overseas. And um, it's a great thing to do. We appreciate anybody who can come in and help with the dinners, drive people around or drive the dinners around or whatever, but also for people you know who would really appreciate a meal that day. And not only is it just a meal that day, but usually there's a movie playing and so it's a day to hang out just like you would do with your family on Christmas Day. And that's a great day for people who don't have that opportunity to come. So we thank you so much for doing that. And that'll do it for me right now. Thank you. <laughs> well, one. Yes, good evening. Uh, Mayor, you hit a lot of mine on the head. I did want to mention also that we had a great Halloween party, a big turnout, and it was real nice. And the New Cumberland Church also had a hallelujah night, and that was lovely. And I want to thank Mrs. Cade for her home school and also her kids club on Friday nights, Friday evening, she has kid club with the children in the community. 
also uh, let the chief talk about a bit uh, about the coffee with the cop. And um, the mayor talked about the fourth annual holiday with three th apps. Uh, the next one I was wanted to talk about today is uh, America Recycle Day and joined the Prince George's County to keep America beautiful in its efforts to recycle more and trash less. You can visit www.american.org. And I also want to, uh, anyone that you know sick and shut in, please let the council member know if they need any transportation to the doctor or maybe we could take them uh, Thanksgiving dinner. We're just checking on our neighbors. Uh, we still have a little bit of problem. I see a lot of people still walking their dogs and you're not picking up behind your dog. So mm -hmm. please pick yeah. up behind your dogs. Around your house, I see the wind's blowing. It's fall of the year, it's winter, and a lot of trash is blowing. So if you see trash around your curves in this net, pick it up, please. I'll let Chief talk about shop with the cop also. And I just want to say have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Ward 2 is absent. Ward 3. Um, yes, do you want to excuse her or? In a minute. Well, we can do it. Okay. I was going to wait till we finished it, but oh, I have okay. it on here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Um, as you know, the weather is getting really cold. I just want the residents to be very mindful when they're using their heaters. Um, around this time of the year, November, December, we seem to have a lot of house fires, so be very mindful of that. Um, I really don't have any complaints or concerns that I know of in Ward 3, but just please, um, like um, Mayor Councilmember Blue said, please um, pick up your poop. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Jackson. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Jackson. Okay, Ward 4. Good evening. Good evening. I'm glad everyone is here with this this evening. Um, I don't have anything for um, in detail for my board report, but if there is anything, definitely call me or call the town hall. Uh, just wanted to wish everyone also a uh, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, yeah. Councilmember Mendoza. Thank you very much. And I understand. Um, Okay, Council Member um, Bowden had um, contacted us that she would not be able to attend tonight because of her work. So is there uh, someone who would like to make a motion to excuse Council Member Bowden? I'll make that motion to state it. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll call for the vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Absent. <laughs> Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. And the mayor votes aye. Are you taking notes? Yeah. Well, at least take two votes. Um, oh, okay. So um, we were we missed um, Miss Nacrease, um, I'm Nacrease Fitness LLC earlier. I believe she is now here. McClaire Jones, CEO. Would you love to come up and tell us all about your boot camp program? Oh, boot camp. Oh, that's so Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Can you go um, the to the mic? mic? The mic, oh. <laughs> oh, that works. That will work. <laughs> uh, so again, thank you for having me. I really um, appreciate the opportunity to be here and for the invite. I can't thank you enough. Um, so again, my, my fitness company's name is Increase Fitness LLC. Um, my name is Naclair, and so the NC is just kind of a play on my name. Um, but the reason I named my company Increase Fitness is because um, I'm very passionate about what I call all of the non-scale victories of fitness and just how fitness increases your life overall. Um, I have my own kind of personal weight loss journey and uh, fitness journey um, and that inspired me to get into the fitness field um, and so here I am today. So currently um, I am so excited and so honored to have the privilege uh, to run my boot camp uh, here at the town hall downstairs in the gym. It's called the Great Eight Small Group Training Program. Uh, the program uh, runs for eight weeks. There are eight slots, so it's a small program. So in essence, you get personal training style attention in a group setting, um, which I found to be the best of both worlds in a sense. 
um, because you know you have the motivation of your peers, you have the group setting, um, the camaraderie, um, but again, you're also able to get that personal training um, in that own lane that I believe that everyone has in fitness. We all, of course, um, come with different fitness levels and backgrounds, and so again, um, this program really is designed for everyone. Um, we do strength training, we do cardio, um, I do push you tough because of course we know in life in general our change typically comes with a challenge, um, so the challenge is present, um, but again there is truly a lane for everyone. Um, so what makes uh, two being here uh, such an honor is that I actually grew up in Bladensburg, I went to Bladensburg Elementary, um, William Wirt Middle School, um, so I am from the area. Um, so again, it, it is such a, a pleasure to um, be back in such familiar territory um, and be able to serve your community. Um, my website is increasefitness.com, so that's increase without the I. Um, and I also, too, if I'm able to um, stick around for a little while, I have some videos available of some of the training um, that we are doing here um, and some of the, yeah, I do have some video available okay. um, for everyone to be able to look at and see. Um, so I would be happy to, um, like I said, I actually forgot some cards today. That's um, not a good thing. But I would love to, like I said, give you uh, my information. Since it is such a small group, it would be easy for me to just give you my website and phone number. So any inquiries you may have or any interests you may have, um, I'd love to be able to answer your questions for you and hopefully talk to you about uh, how I can increase your fitness. <laughs> Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, we're also really very excited about Wonderful. having the opportunity to have you here in Great. the community center. Um, one of my um, passions have been is to make this place live. Okay, absolutely. And so now, I mean, it's living from five in the morning until <laughs> nine at night. You know? yes. So. Um, in terms of your program, now you said you had eight slots, and I know you have mm -hmm. two separate sessions. Yes. Is it eight per session? Yes, it's eight per session. Um, so okay. right now, we're, I'm running a program Monday through Thursday. So typically, um, we do them in groups. So you attend training twice per week. Um, so there's a Monday, Wednesday group. So you get a, a day off and a Tuesday, Thursday group. Um, I do have some members that I make special concessions for that can maybe only come Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, basically, you know, I'm happy to work with you. Um, you you know with whatever you need mm -hmm. and in terms of the um, now I know you're in the middle of a session now yes oh. so uh, I think this session ends December 15th yes have you already scheduled because I'm sure you got a whole lot of New Year resolutions out <laughs> absolutely. there waiting for you to schedule your absolutely. January session so yeah. absolutely absolutely so I'd be hoping to start um, of course you know we wanted to I guess do um, a session to get us in the door um, so hopefully we'll be welcome back and uh, we'll be starting a session the first of January so whatever the first Monday is in January so we'll take two weeks off mm -hmm. for the Christmas holiday and things of that such um, is it the second you know? Oh, I thought I heard that. Okay, okay. Well, Jan oh, January 2nd, all right. Well, January 2nd, it'll be. So, um, like you said, getting started on those New Year's goals. Um, and like I said, uh, for me, you know, the looking good part of fitness, the beauty part is just kind of the plus. Um, I'm very passionate, um, you know, about us living well, living long, living strong. Um, and so, really, like I said, I would just uh, love to, like you said, get this, this program rocking and uh, hopefully make the community fitter, healthy, and happier. Because ultimately, that's what, too, I've learned, is that when you are living a, a healthy lifestyle, you know, happiness is definitely, you know, very close by. Taking care of your physical health, which in turn take care, takes care of your mental health, your spiritual health. So healthy in 2018, let's get it done. Yes. All right. <laughs> thank you yes, so thank much. You Wait a so minute, don't again. go yet, because okay. I'm going to ask, they're going to ask you some sure. questions. Too. What is the price? The price, so um, our price, I usually run um, a special in the beginning, an early bird special. So you pay for your sessions up front. Um, this round we did early bird at 255, which averages, um, you get 16 sessions. I forgot to mention, um, you actually end up with 18 sessions because we do a pre and post assessment. Um, so when you first start the program, we do your picture, we do your um, weight, your body mass index, um, your body fat percentage, your muscle percentage. Um, you know, we kind of get down to the nitty gritty of it all. Um, and just to put it out there, men and, welcome, men and women are welcome. I also, I do have some men in the program um, that truly enjoy it. Um, but it, we also do those assessments on the other side. 
Um, so if you catch it at the sale price, it averages about, I think, maybe to $11 per class. Mm -hmm. The full price is uh, $275 for the eight weeks for your 18 sessions, and that takes you up to maybe about $13, $14 per class. So really very comparable, um, you know, to other fitness programs. Mm -hmm. um, and again, especially when you look at, um, you know, that bonus attention um, in, you know, your assessments and all that fun stuff. Um, like I said, truly very comparable to, um, you know, your local uh, training options. That's yeah. not bad. That's really, yeah. really yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Well, I, um, someone had already commented how class is going um, on Facebook. Oh, nice. So I heard, I was like, they said, you gotta go to the fitness class at 5 a.m. at um, Coma Manor. And I was like, <laughs> yay. Nice. So we're, uh, huh? It's six, I mean six. Yes, oh, yes, six. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yes, so yes. I, yeah, so it was got good comments. That's so great to classes. hear. So I do have a Facebook page also. It's Increase Fitness LLC. Um, so if you're on Facebook, um, feel free to um, look for us, and I'll definitely look, look for the town uh, of Comer Manor now so that I can also like your page and we can all stay in touch. Please do, and awesome. if you have videos that we that we can actually share on our YouTube, wonderful, um, yeah, that would be great, and Definitely. we can push out on our um, Facebook page too. Mm -hmm. You have a YouTube page? Yes, I do have an incre uh, a YouTube Increase Fitness LLC across the board. I have an Instagram also. If anyone is on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, Increase Fitness LLC there also. Um, so yeah, definitely trying to cover the social media bases. <laughs> so please send us the any videos that we can actually post. Absolutely, so that would be great to do. Mm -hmm. um, anybody have any other questions? Um, how long is each um, session, like class? Each class is from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. Uh, so. Previously, I have run 5 a.m. classes. Um, I've also done some children's fitness because before I got into fitness, I was a center director with kinder care for 10 years, so have a strong background in early childhood education. So um, I have kind of a lot under my belt, so hopefully we can uh, you know, continue to work together, um, like you said, to, to, to make the community happy, healthier, fitter. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, before you go, I, oh, you have another question. Uh, uh, what about the seniors? Do the seniors work in this program with the rest? Absolutely, absolutely. So, <laughs> well, you don't Camille always like wants to remind us that she's a senior. <laughs> um, so my oldest participant this year is, or this cycle, is 70 years old. Wow. Um, and so again, that's what I love about fitness, is there's truly a lane for everyone. So even when you're watching the videos, don't get discouraged. Like, oh, I can't do that. Trust me, I've got a, an option for you. Oh, so you might have to find a partner or something so you can increase the number of people you can take. That would be amazing. That would yes, be amazing. because yeah. I really think that we could yeah, I, think, I, I don't yeah. know if you're available but tomorrow we have our luncheon for our seniors okay and if you want to come by and say a couple of words to them sure. that would be great it's at noon to. tomorrow at so. noon yeah mm -hmm. i'd love to stop by definitely. okay great Tomorrow's please Tuesday, do Sunday. yes i will do so so I'll okay see, uh everyone tomorrow that. noon thank okay. you thanks again for having me i really appreciate I wanna, it um, before you, you go oh, sure, sure, sure. i also want to thank camille um Skites, sykes sykes <laughs> sykes <laughs> our resident who is the person who bought this beautiful woman up to our town hall to use it. And um, it is, it's exactly what I wanted to see coming out of our community is when our residents recognize that we have an asset here, that they take advantage of it and find ways in order for it to help our community. I thank you so much for bringing us this program. And on top of that, it is, it's important. And the other thing is, is that as we heard about the program, we wrestled with how do we, how do, we do the program because we always have watchers who, who watch mm -hmm. um, the hall and ensure that everything puts together. And uh, Ms. I, Sykes, Ms. Sykes agreed to watch for us so that we can have um, this program here. So I thank you for that as Great. well. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, you're awesome. Thank yes, you Yes, so thank you much. so much, Camille, and thank you so much uh, for having me and allowing me. I mean, really, this came up, um, we had been doing boot camp in the park for the summer, um, and you know, the clients have been asking me, what are we gonna do, you know, come winter? And I'm like, we're, you know, we're gonna be somewhere, and I honestly did not know 
how you know it was all going to come together. And Camille said, well, you know, you should give the town hall a call. I spoke with Kayla as well as Renee. So everyone has been so kind um, and so gracious. And the gym is actually like so perfect for this space. Like it just kind of you know gelled together. So um, yeah. thank you, thank you so much. And that's just the motivation out there for anyone. If you have a vision, you know, go for it. You know, the pieces you know eventually come together. So to work out for you. So thank you so much again. Right. I really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, moving on on the agenda. Next item on the agenda is to um, us to give you an overview of what happened at the work session. Um, first of all, before I go there, I want to start out with some additions that were made to the um, post-it agenda. Um, we added on the post-it agenda, um, what, is this a different? Okay, we added an item about um, the staff holiday party, um, about in having an international culture night. We had um, a form for volunteer consent, uh, a drug and alcohol, well, no, that drug and alcohol, that was on there. Um, we talked about chairs for the town hall, a fire inspection, the PEFCO tree activity, Peace Cross, um, Definitions of resolutions, policy, ordinances, and MOUs, the building cameras, code enforcement, uh, retreat manager, uh, oh, the mayor council retreat, and permeable sidewalk grant. Okay, so it, after telling you what we added, I'll give you a, uh, just a summary of what happened in each item. For the holiday um, baskets, the holiday basket and gift call cards, the uh, mayor council voted to get um, five, so it's five, five of uh, fifty dollars. Yeah, uh, no, one, twenty-five. Two, five fifty dollar. No, uh, twenty-five dollars. Oh, twenty-five dollars. Okay, 25. I thought I was getting something wrong. Twenty-five. Ten twenty-five dollar mm -hmm. cards um, for each ward uh, council to um, give to someone uh, they know is in need and um, for the mayor to give to two of someone that uh, she knows is in need and also voted to, well, we didn't vote on the baskets. We were expecting to get, I think, something like 60 baskets um, that come to us from um, Shalom. Mm -hmm. And we will, um, if you are in need or you know someone who is in need, the baskets usually contain a good number of uh, items, not just, a, you know, um, you can have these food for any time you need it, basically. And it's a bag, it's not a basket, it's a whole bag of, of, of a lot of goodies. So if you know anybody that's in need, oh, or, you, is it a chicken in there? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't know all of them had the chicken in there. Mm -hmm. it, and if you know anybody who's in need, please call the town hall or have them call the town hall and let us know. Um, we usually have to work harder than we thought we would have to work in order to get them out there. So we just really want to hear from people. Uh, we know people need um, to have these items. And also, um, usually getting a little bit closer, we wind up hearing about turkeys that come from our delegates and so forth. They usually come a little bit later on the, the, um, the last week before Thanksgiving. So get your name on a list somewhere if you need something, and then we can see if we can get something to you. And, um, and please let your neighbors know. Um, once you call and you request it, um, we keep your name in confidence as to who it is that's called and requested um, those items. So it's not as if you have to feel bad about having to ask. Just please do. Um, we will have our staff holiday party on December the 15th. TBD, we're still trying to figure it out. International Culture Night, which is what Council Member Mendoza um, proposed, is a, is a night of culture to celebrate all the different cultures of our community. We scheduled that to be January the 13th. Um, um, you'll find, you'll get more information to that as we get closest to the date. Um, we have a consent form already for volunteers and we wanted to ensure that the consent form would um, include for minors the permission of the parent. We have a signature of the parent but it doesn't literally say if you have permission that, you know, this child has the permission to actually work here and um, be, hold the town harmless of anything that may happen. Um, but that didn't finally get completed. We sent um, 
we sent uh, Mr. Barr back to do some more combining of it and, and trim, trimming it down, so we're still working on that. Um, we, we voted on a circuit resolution, writer resolution. Um, I meant, as I mentioned before, we have the circuit writer with the town of Brentwood, um, North Brentwood and the town of Fremont Heights. North Brentwood is the primary um, on the circuit writer, so we had to do another resolution in order to say that we agree to be a part of this um, uh, resolution. We also are required to have a drug and alcohol policy per the state based on the circuit being a part of the circuit writer program. And so um, we received a draft um, from the town of North Brentwood. We reviewed that draft. We felt there were a lot of things that need to be changed in that draft. And therefore, we also have asked Mr. Barr to go back and revise that um, and we will, so that we can actually review that and make a, a, a vote on that. Chairs. Um, we have some challenges with our chairs in terms of they are, you know, about seven years old. We bought covers for the chairs so that they can be um, handled, but we're looking at the price of either reupholstering the chairs or buying new chairs and looking at which one is compatible. So we're going to move forward to get a price on upholstery to see how much would it be to reupholster the chairs. And uh, depending on what that price is, we will make a decision as to whether or not we're going to purchase new chairs. And so, um, but that would be in next year's budget. Um, but right now we have the covers and so we'll be using the covers until that period of time. Um, we had a fire inspection of the building. Um, there were very minor things that needed to be cared for. And so we went ahead and we moved forward with the items there. Um, we have chairs and tables downstairs. That was the most major thing that we had to make a change to is to get racks for the chairs and move them from their current location to another location. And so we're moving forward with that process. Uh, the Pepco tree activity, I gave you guys just an update already in my mayor's report about what was happening there. Peace Cross, I gave you an update of what's happening there. Um, Mr. Barr will be uh, sending us a definition of what is a resolution, what is a policy, what is an ordinance, what is an MOU, what is the difference between all of these things. So we're all very clear when we're, when we're doing these different things, when, which one is the appropriate one for us to move forward on. Building cameras. Um, we currently have um, 20 cameras in this building and um, and watching the cameras and using the building a whole lot more than um, had previously been assumed would be um, we're noticing where we're missing cameras and the cameras are now seven years old and they were probably outdated when they first were put up in the first place at the mm -hmm. time when the cam when they actually came in so which probably puts them at about 10 years behind so we have put money in the budget already in order to actually upgrade the system we have but there's a likelihood that we can actually get a new system so we've asked the uh, clerk treasurer to move forward with um, to move forward with the getting some quotes on upgrading the cameras, get us 32 cameras because we budgeted about $4,000 and it looks like we can get 32 cameras in a new server for 40, 40, $4,000 or so. The difference is the cost of installation and how much that may cost it depending on the compatibility of what we get. But if we can get 32 cameras, it'll make it um, a much better for us to watch the activities in the building as it's moving around. And um, so we talked about uh, yeah, the mayor and council has agreed um, we're going to have a retreat on January 11th. Um, as far as a mayor council retreat goes, there is no business that takes care in that retreat. It's simply an opportunity for the mayor and the council to talk about the things that they're concerned about and would like to see us move forward on. Um, and I say that because as the open, um, as the open meeting act, um, we are not to take care of any business when we're all in a space that we haven't invited the public to. And so we will clearly not be taking care of any business, but simply bringing up information about things that we want, we're, are concerned about and would like to see us um, bring forward in the public around to talk about. We have a grant for permeable pavers and we talked about what the status of that was with, um, with uh, Mr. Baden. And he is now looking into that and um, is, is pulling the records up to see where we are in that process. And I'll be hearing back from him soon on what we need to do to go forward. So that was the work session. A closed session was called after the work session for personnel matters. And um, those matters were discussed. And then we came back into the regular session without any action taken. Um, 
uh, in relationship to the conversation, and then we move forward. Oh, I forgot to say, yeah, we, we talked about code enforcement too. I don't know how you missed that. Um, uh, recently, um, Mr. Um, our previous code enforcement officer, Mr. Um, Rick Queen, Queen um, has, has been terminated from employment here. Um, and we're, going, we're looking forward um, to looking at a process of going forward in how we want to establish code enforcement, what rules, what processes, what systems, how do we actually want to see that move forward. Um, we briefly mentioned um, that we have had some communication with Cottage City, who also is without a code enforcement officer. And so we will be having conversations um, with them to see um, if there's a way, as we have done with the chief successfully, for us to also share a code enforcement sure. officer, uh, bringing in somebody full time who has benefits and this is a more permanent um, type of employment, which we think is a better opportunity for us in that direction. So did I miss anything from the work session, no. um, Council? All right, thank you no, so I much. I can move thank forward you. now. Um, Treasures. Treasures report. Okay. Mr. Barr. John Barr. Okay, Treasures report. Yeah. Oh, um, you can, I was gonna do it. Um, Mr. Baden is, absent from our meeting tonight. Uh, Treasurer's report, which you will find in your folders, a copy of which I believe is available uh, to the public on the uh, table to my left. Uh, from uh, uh, June 1st, pardon me, from July 1st uh, through the date hereof, uh, the town has received uh, revenues of $756,152.86. Of that, $606,292.98 uh, was uh, for real estate taxes. On general government expenditures for the three months ending, uh, pardon me, three months? Yes, three months ending um, September 1st, and for the month of October, uh, the uh, uh, expenditures for uh, government were $169,650.54 for general government. For the senior van operations in that uh, four month period, the town spent $15,734. For code enforcement, the town, which the mayor just spoke, town spent $13,185.11. For public works, $76,179.55, which includes waste collection of $20,388. Uh, town hall expenses for the community center were $32,817.19. For public safety, the town expended $112,997.58. Um, and for uh, community center operations, $47,182.60. All this is against uh, um, total expenditures of $508,347.54. For the four months, in assets and in uh, total assets, the town has three million seven hundred thirteen dollars, one hundred and twenty-two dollars and twenty-four cents, of which nine hundred and sixty thousand three hundred and eighty-seven dollars and thirty cents uh, are investments the town has, putting its funds to work with the Maryland local government uh, investment pool. Petty cash of $400, petty cash for police of $250, uh, deposits of $1,770, um, and um, uh, other uh, matters, totaling total assets of, uh, again, $1,087,062.99.
And that is Mr. Baden's report. I ask for approval of his report to the Mayor and Town Council. Is there a motion to accept the treasurer's report? I'll make a motion to state it. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Um, okay, so what I'll do is point out what I normally do in looking at the budgets are um, is that I look at where we are in the year compared to or where we are in the um, where we are in the year as we are to the percentage of spending that we've done in the year. I don't really do it with income that much because our income comes in mostly for property taxes, which is twice a year in September and in January. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we know that they leap forward in a different way when it comes to income. I will point out though that um, we have um, projected $90,000 for rental income for the facility and we're over that 33% at this time, which is awesome because that's a momentum in the right direction and hopefully we'll even do better than the 90,000 that we have proposed. I will mention that in general government, which is our largest expenditure, we're only at 20% of that total, 21%, so that's well below the 33% we might normally see. Um, in payroll in that particular area, it's a little bit high, um, so we'll check and see why it's just a little bit over. Um, when we look at um, the senior van operation, it's um, a little high, it's just 1% higher, so we'll check on what's going on there. Um, also in the code enforcement area, that's probably due to some abatements that need to take place because what we do is when there's a property that needs to be cleaned up, that's not being cleaned up, we pay for it. But then um, it's a while before we get the money back um, for doing so. Public works is under budget. Um, the community center um, is under budget. The um, public safety is way under budget by almost nine points. Um, the police chief budget, where we have a difference there from something. Oh, so it's a little up, but it's because of training. And because training happens at different odd times of the year, it's not like something you can just divide by 12. And so the training is in there, which throws it off, the total number off. Um, then uh, the community center operations. Well, it's, I, don't, I don't know why this is under community center operations, but the 90th anniversary is in there. The 90th anniversary is done. So again, it's a big number that came all the way in the forward, so it throws off the other numbers. But it really doesn't belong under community center operations because it wasn't a community center. We didn't no. even do it in a community center. No, it wasn't a community huh? center. It was not a community center operation. It should mm -hmm. not be there. No, no. It, should, it shouldn't be in that location. Yeah, we'll, move, we'll have that moved out of there so it's because it's distorting the numbers altogether. So, um, from my perspective, um, we are in, in a good position right now in the budget. And so moving forward, um, as we usually do, I've been pretty pleased that we, we stay in budget every year unless we have something significant that happens like having to buy sump pumps or things like that that you just have to handle. So I will, unless somebody has any other statements or questions, um, no. No I'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Absent. Absent. Ward three? Aye. Ward four? Aye. And the mayor votes aye. Thank you so much, Mr. Barr. Who was the seconder on the motion? Um, I did. Thank you, Ms. Mendoza. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Chief, we have a police report? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for being here. Just a couple things on the police report. I'll go over some <laughs> incidents that we had and then some initiatives that, that are ongoing. Uh, we had a very low crime uh, rate this, this month, a couple things. We had a uh, motor vehicle accident in the town during the daytime. It was a gentleman that was under the influence of alcohol. We were very fortunate. One of our residents actually called us. We were able to get there uh, in time. No injuries. The, very fortunate, though, in a residential area, the gentleman drove off the road up onto the sidewalk through someone's fence and came to rest in someone's yard, placed the individual under arrest, and he w his uh, blood alcohol content was two and a half times the limit. So, innocent until proven guilty, so we're just waiting for that to go to trial. 
Uh, we had one shoplifter, and, and unfortunately, uh, a Cottage City officer, uh, we, we monitor the, the shopping centers between Cottage City and Colmar Manor, served a gentleman running out, uh, watched the gentleman, watched him get into a car, pulled the traffic, stop. The individual had about $50 worth of merchandise. The owner from Shoppers Food come out and identified him. Uh, the gentleman was placed under arrest for shoplifting and, and some minor uh, controlled dangerous substances. Uh, as noted, he had $990 cash in his pocket. Wow. And, he, and he shoplifted $50 worth oh, wow. of, of merchandise. Um, and the last thing, uh, we, we always talk about uh, thefts from vehicles. Uh, we're very fortunate, again, I, I really uh, want to give accolades to our citizens and our community representatives and to our business folks. Uh, we only had one theft uh, from a motor vehicle uh, that was in the Colmar Manor Shopping Center. Unfortunately, uh, the young lady left a significant amount of money, uh, a, uh, her cell phone and her bank cards sitting on the front seat of the car. And so, uh, very unfortunate, but it's the only one that we had this year, or this month, excuse me. It's the number one crime in Prince George's County. They, they, they average between 25 and 30 thefts from autos every day. Uh, so, and it's the number one preventable. So we really encourage our folks, again, to keep their doors locked in their cars, to remove their, their valuables from their cars. If they can't remove them, at least place them inside uh, the trunk of the motor vehicle. But other than that, very low crime, and I, I really you know, give accolades to our folks. A couple of initiatives. Um, I was able to attend the graduation ceremony at the Prince George's uh, Community College Municipal Police Academy. Why was that important? When that class graduated, three of those candidates have applied to our agency. Uh, we're conducting interviews uh, November 21st and 22nd. We have right now 10 candidates that have applied, so we're, we're looking forward to interviewing those uh, prospective candidates. I was also able to talk to the, uh, the police academy class at Anne Arundel County Community College. As a result of that, we had two people apply from that class. So very fortunate. Uh, we've got a, a broad spectrum of folks, and we're looking forward to interviewing uh, those folks on November the 21st and the 22nd. And I'll keep the, the mayor and certainly the council uh, apprised of, of the progress of that. A um, couple of things. Uh, we applied for a, a grant from the governor's office of uh, crime control and prevention and we were awarded us $688 for some body armor. So what, that, what that enables me to do is one of these officers that comes in now, we're able to, to purchase that body armor without uh, having to use expenditures from, from, the, from the town itself. Um, as, one, as the mayor and the council members uh, indicated, uh, we're going to, on December the 13th in Annapolis, we're gonna receive the Governor's Crime Prevention Award at the Colmar Manor Police Department is for our knock and talk program as the outstanding proactive crime prevention program in Maryland. What was that? That was basically an initiative that actually started before I got here, uh, where the officers went and they put door hangers and they went and tried to knock and talk to every citizen uh, within the community, give them, give them our cell numbers, our phone numbers, just to see what those, the, the interests that were generated, some of the issues, and it was recognized by the state of Maryland. So we're very, very proud of that, and that'll be on December the 13th. Uh, in Annapolis, and we'll put that on our Facebook and our YouTube so the citizens are, are aware of it. So really, really, really proud of the officers uh, for that accomplishment. Uh, on December the 8th, um, we're going to have a shop with a cop uh, for Christmas. Uh, members of the Colmar Manor Police Department and the Cottage City Police Department will take eight needy children. Those children have been identified um, by the, uh, the elementary uh, school principal from Rogers Heights. So we'll pick those children up. Uh, we'll have uh, funds available for those children to go Christmas shopping with the police departments. After that, we're gonna take them out for a meal. So we're really looking forward uh, to helping those children to not only to help them as far as the gifts, but to build that relationship between the children. So that's on December the 8th, uh, and that's from five o'clock in the evening until eight o'clock. Um, we're also gonna have a, a coffee with a cop. I was. I was prompted by the council member Blue. She said, Chief, when are you going to have your coffee with a cop? So uh, I have to give her kudos for that. That's going to be on November the 28th. Um, again, it'll be a joint effort between our police department and the Cottage City Police Department at the IHOP. It'll be from 8 to 1030 in the morning. So we're really encouraging the citizens to come out. I know it's a work day, uh, but we're really encouraging the folks to come out to the IHOP and, and we'll have coffee and, and be able to, uh, to buy the breakfast for folks. Um, we're also Thinking about it, I'll have to talk with the, the mayor and the council about uh, on that day having urging folks to bring in some gently used coats, some warm coats. Uh, we'll take custody of those and we would give them out as the mayor indicated on December the 25th when we have our dinner. And, and I think that that would be a huge benefit. And again, we have some 
if we have some needy folks, I think that would be a gracious uh, opportunity to be able to meet those folks' needs. But you'll hear more about that, and we'll, again, we'll put that on, on our Facebook and YouTube. Uh, the Trunk or Treat, uh, we had a great opportunity, a great time that with that uh, October the 28th here, uh, with the police department cooperating in that or participating. And then on October the 31st during uh, Halloween, we had a Trunk or Treat. I was at uh, 40th and Newark, and Sergeant Sims was at 43rd and Lawrence. We had probably about 30 to 40 children come out, and, which is fine. Uh, they, they were safe. We were able to give those children uh, some treats and, again, more than anything, establish relationships with them. So, and we had no calls for disturbance, no issues on Halloween night, so we're very, very fortunate. Every one of the children had a guardian with them. I, I didn't see one child come up uh, without a, a guardian, so that was, that was very, very encouraging. Um, and the last thing that I'll, that I'll talk about here, I think I've probably talked enough, is, is we're getting into the holiday season. Uh, so uh, again, make sure you lock your cars, hide your valuables, try not to have deliveries um, sent to your residences if you're not going to be home. Um, there are folks that actually follow the delivery trucks and they'll watch and they'll wait and see if nobody comes up. So uh, it's, it's a very vulnerable time. Uh, daylight savings, because now it's getting darker and darker a lot, lot earlier, really try to watch out for the children because during the holiday season we're going to have a lot of time off and, and the kids will be out there out playing. Last thing is, is I, I, I'm in the shopping center a lot and I see there's a, a huge amount of people using the ATM there, which is good. But just a, just a hint, and I'm not giving away any secrets, it's, it's, a, it's hopefully well known. When you're punching in your PIN number, if you have to punch your PIN number in, always put your hand over top of your fingers because there are things called skimmers that folks will put on ATMs. So not only they, they're capturing your, your card, credit card number, but more importantly, they're capturing uh, your PIN number. So if you just put your hand over top of the hand that's putting the PIN number in, it stops that skimmer from recording that. And there's a lot of folks that use those ATMs. Uh, the last thing is I always give out my cell number. My cell number is 202-309-6650. I probably get 15 to 20 phone calls a week uh, from the citizens in Colmar, Maryland. And I really appreciate that. Uh, my email address is wlowry at colmarmanor.org. And the last thing is I want to express our, our sincere appreciation to all of our veterans. Uh, can't thank them enough for the service that they've rendered uh, to our community. So I think that's it, ma'am. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chief. Yes, um, is there a motion to accept the um, police report? I'll make that motion as stated. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Um, I just wanted to add, I want to say a very uh, big thank you to Sergeant Sims. Um, as I was been interested in this knock and talk since I became mayor, um, it's been a challenge to get it going in a way that is acceptable on both sides. People feel like intimidated when the police are coming to their house and what is this all about and whatnot. And, um, and she, when she was working as active chief, you know, we sat down and went back and forth. It was like, what can we do? What can we do? Whatever. And we came up with the door knockers as a way to personalize um, the intention of the police in coming to see you so that you know they're not coming to um, do something that they, they, they're saying up front. We're coming to see you, and this is why we're coming to see you. And so I, I want to thank her for actually submitting the application yes, because I had no idea that she submitted the application for what she was doing. And so I, I feel like this has been a successful um, direction for us to go in for this. So I thank her very much, and I'll call for a vote. What uh, one? I just have a question for the chief. Um, chief, on December the 8th, you said shop with the cop. Um, are you also accepting donations? I know in the past we had some our business or people, residents donated to this mm -hmm. worthy cause. And yes. also, will you also have a wounded um, veteran? Are we still taking out a wounded veteran? Um, issue? We're working with Sergeant Sims on the wounded veteran because we're going to uh, we're going to combine between Colmar Manor and Cotter City. So she's working with that right now, and to get that veteran identified, it may be a little late. I, I talked with her this morning, so she's trying to work with the DoD folks to see if we can get that. If we will certainly incorporate them. One, to the donations, yes, ma'am. Uh, I mean, we have a line item. I have a budget line item specifically for that. But wow. yes, ma'am, we'd be more than willing to accept donations. The more money we have, the more we can give to these children. Um, absolutely. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead. 
Uh, yes, Chief, I want to say also thank you to you and Officer Sims for being at the bus stops in the a.m. and the p.m. Yes, but the buses still are late picking the children up. Yes, they they're are. out there 20 and 35 minutes. Yeah, and it's tough seeing the parents, especially when they're late arriving back from right. school. There's a lot of emotions from the parents, and we try, to, we try to work with the school board and the elementary schools. But yeah, there's, there's really no causing one causing factor uh, that creates that, and it, well, it's, it's an issue. Um, excuse me. I really think the causing factor is we don't have enough um, bus drivers for our public schools. Mm -hmm. um, they're always asking for bus drivers, and they have to um, pass a background check and also yes, a drug check. I do know Delegate Fennell has actually been really working on it because we're not the only municipality has been complaining about bus drivers being late. So the bus drivers we currently have, they are actually doing probably two schools at the same time. Right. So it's not that they're being late because they're being tardy. A lot of times they're dropping off kids at one school, they're, and then they're picking up kids from the other school. So I just ask, please just bear with them. And our schools, please don't make our kids be tardy on, on account of the buses. Thanks. Well, a lot of them miss breakfast because yeah, they, they miss. I know, but that it, there's a problem class, in Prince George's right. County because we they don't have enough bus drivers. So if someone's looking for a job, they have a CDL license, um, their record is fine as far as and they're doing very good with um, background checks being around kids. Right. That takes some time. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. where the issue um, causes the lateness in the buses. Oh, well, thank you all for that information. Mm -hmm. Since I don't have young children or, or, or grandchildren, <laughs> that's, I have to give a kid. I'm not aware of that. But um, I didn't really, I don't know, I don't have, I, I, I think if the county knows that it has a problem and they can't hire people right now, they need to adjust the time of them doing certain things because a lot of times this is the only time children have food is when they go to school. And missing breakfast is not an option. I don't know. I they agree. They don't want to go yeah. wet and cold standing out there 30 minutes waiting on a bus. Yeah, because they have to be right. out there. All the schools can allow them to have um, maybe curly lunch in their room. I, I'm not sure, but I right, agree exactly. because some families, that's the, that is the only way that they have meals. They need to be making adjustments for a problem that they know they have, not just saying, oh, wow, we don't have right. the drivers yet. Right. But at any rate, um, we'll see what we, I mean, hmm, interesting right. topic. Um, it's a call for vote, uh, Ward 1. Aye. Ward 2. Absent. Ward 3. Aye. Ward 4. Aye. And the mayor votes aye. Thank you, Chief. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I want to thank you Chief. for reminding me about the Harvest Fest um, that we had on the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Oh, my God, it was a great success. This place <laughs> was packed. Oh, my uh, uh, Young and old. And uh, we had the hayride that went down to the garden. I want to thank the Garden Club. It did such an enormously awesome job. Right of decorating the uh, West Garden. It was beautiful. And the kids had a great time, you know, searching for whatever, learning a little bit about gardening and getting a little story. It was an excellent, excellent event. Mm -hmm. Thank everybody who participated. It, it, it really it was a learning event. We incorporated, everything was incorporated. And I, I, I'm just so proud of uh, this town and the, the people in it. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. Um, I want to say, um, well, I'm going to leave that one to the end. So we're going to move on to unfinished business. Um, as I mentioned um, in the work session, we have reviewed a draft policy um, from North Brentwood about drug and alcohol, and um, Mr. Barber is going to bring that back to us um, so we can review it. Um, we got a copy of that in our mail um, around 3 o'clock today. And um, I personally am not comfortable at this time for us to take a vote on it. I'll listen to other thoughts. Um, anyone else who has a point of view about it right now? I, I didn't read it, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, I haven't really had time to go over it. I don't think we should take a vote on right. it at this time. Okay. I agree. All right. So, it, so in the case that the state requires that we have a drug and alcohol policy, um, in relation to the circuit writer, and, and I'm in full agreement that we're not prepared to vote on the policy. Um, is it possible we can get a vote that states that we intend to have a policy in place by the end of this year so that we can let the, the, let the um, state know 
that even though we're not prepared to vote on this yet, our intentions, we are all in agreement that we are going to vote gonna on this. A, a right. Eight. Yes. Okay. okay. So we're going to table this and do that. Yes. And okay. just vote on agreeing. Mm -hmm. So I'll, there's I'll a motion. I'll, yes. I'll make that motion stated. Okay. So that motion is, is that we will, the town of Comor Manor have a drug and alcohol policy in place by the end of December, at the year. end of this year. Right. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, any discussion? I'll call for the vote. Ward one? Aye. Ward two? Absent. Ward three? Aye. Ward four? Aye. And the mayor votes aye. Thank you so much. Uh, we have no new business. And so now we can move on to our senior reports. Uh, I mean, our community reports. We, do we have a senior report? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Um, in case that wasn't heard on the um, mic, the seniors, we have no report, but they're looking very, they're very excitedly looking towards their luncheon tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to that as well. Garden Club report. Good afternoon, Mayor Council. Good afternoon, Mr. Yeah, Ball Chief. Um, it's not coming up. Wait a minute, I'm at the um, I, have it. I have it. Um, I, I want to it. thank Mr. Luz for donating those planters. You have it up? I have it up for um, you. Can I use yours? Absolutely. <laughs> Can't you send it to me? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I want to thank End Time Harvest Ministry for helping us cleaning up the garden, the West Garden and the East Garden. Those kids and parents came out in full force. I think it took us every bit of 20 minutes. <laughs> they were shocked too. They was like, so when are we going to finish? And we was like, well, maybe 12 o'clock. We finished like 10.30. I think oh, we went down there at 9, finished about 10. Yeah, it was about mm. 10. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It took us longer to walk down there than it did uh, <laughs> to do the work. So I want to thank their, uh, her group, the, the parents and the children for coming out. The Halloween the Garden, I would like to thank the police department for the donation, Delica Fennell. I'd like to thank the resident who participated. Call my man and mayor and council. Thank you guys so much for your participation and your donation. And, um, there was about 100 plus children and parents that came down because we had, we had, we, we hid the pumpkins. They were all sizes and I think it was over 100 pumpkins. Mm -hmm. I went down there Saturday, we had one left. There was one down there. <laughs> right. So yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for your donation. Um, Kim, Ms. Kim and I, we, re we rearranged the bricks that was in the West Garden that was donated by our uh, own Master Garden, Julianne Bethay who made sure both God has addresses on them now. So, you know, I was, for the longest time, I was saying 3800, it's actually 3806. So I was giving people the wrong address, but it was next door anyway, so, yeah. And um, we did, we did uh, rearrangement in the uh, garden of the bricks, and we also walked around and looked at the plots that needs to be uh, redone for uh, April, because, um, uh, Reverend Addison and her kids used to come out and help us um, re, uh, do the spring cleaning. So this time we're going to have to do the spring cleaning with more um, soil and as well as new plots. But we're looking at new plots and I need to talk to the mayor council more about that. We have, we have the wooden ones but looking at the one at Langley in DC right here off of Rolanda Avenue their 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 plots are so beautiful so I'm gonna take a picture and I'm gonna send it to you guys so you can look at it because that's what I'm, I'm trying to go uh, to now try because it may be a little bit more expensive but I think it's gonna be expensive no matter what because we we'll have to keep changing out every two or three years so if we do this it's just like a one time we don't have to worry about it again so that's it for that um, I cannot thank Mr. Les enough for his donation for the planters, the plants, and the soil in the shopping center. Ms. Blue helped me plant the plants in there, so I want to thank you so much, Councilmember Blue. If you're, if you're not sure, 
If you, if you do not shop at the shopping center, first I want to say, support your community by patronizing stores. The plants in the shopping center look so nice. If you, if, if you see trash in it, please pick the trash out. Give it a little bit of water, you know. We know people are gonna feed it with the chicken bones and the papers <laughs> and the cigarettes. You know, they may think it's hungry, whatever the case may be, I'm not sure, but we just need to make sure it stay clean out and keep it beautified up there. Um, and, let's see, what you want to let's say, um, There was there there will be no meeting in December. Instead, we will have eggnog in the garden. That is to be determined. I have to send out the address to everyone that wants to attend. And I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to add. I just really appreciate really the the, the planters. Um, I want to say um, it brings the beauty pop. I'd like mm -hmm. us to get some more mm -hmm. and see if we can get some more there oh, and okay. maybe and maybe Mr. Lesser help us out in getting some more. Yeah, because yeah. one of the owners, she came out and attacked us when we was out there because we didn't have one in front of her store. Ah, yes. So, everybody <laughs> so one we said, okay, we'll get we one promise. out there for her. Uh -huh. yeah. We promise. Yeah. Yes. And, um, um, and I do want to just say also for everybody out there, if you see something, say something. Um, I, these ladies put an awful lot of work into uh, putting those planters out there and our public works um, nailed them down into the concrete mm -hmm. and yet someone still sure, attempted to take them and not and pull one, it, were both of them pulled, two of them pulled over? Two, it was two. Mm -hmm. Two of them, they ripped them out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And yes. so then they had to go back and, and replace them, replace uh, which them, they yeah. did and put it back together again, but oh my goodness. And the I reason mean, those are there because we have four or five of them there already someone stole. So we had to replace those. It took us almost a year to get those replaced. But we made sure they was bolted down. They were bolted time. down. We were bolting yeah. them down so they so, wouldn't be stolen. And yeah. somebody just ripped it, just ripped it. Didn't even take it out. They ripped it out. Just left it there, dirt hanging out of it. And so. It's so, they're so pretty. They're just beautiful. Yeah, it just pops out when you um, go walk into the shopping center. Yeah. So I don't know um, what, where the beauty and people are gone yeah. to. Um, I also wanted to say, um, I don't know if we announced it last month, but the beautification award, I think that came oh, in between. Did, did you yeah, announce it? Yeah, we did. We announced yes. it last month. That was month. last month yeah. when we had got the beautification yeah, award? Okay, uh -huh. so um, for both gardens. And, um, and, and then just last night, we found out that we potentially have someone who will, a cooking instructor, mm -hmm. so that we can bring our cooking back, uh, a cooking instructor who will do it for free. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, because we hadn't done them, because before we had a grant in order to pay the instructor and so forth, but the grant paid for all of our cooking equipment and all of that kind of stuff, so we have all of those, so hopefully, um, we'll bring the cooking classes back probably it'll probably be in the spring um, to start doing um, the cooking classes again because I, I felt like they did we did a great that it was a, a successful program so yeah um, and we'll have the garden club involved and Saturday I'm sorry the garden club our meeting is every third Saturday from it's actually 10 to 12 but this Saturday we having it from 9 to 12 but the first um, two the first hour from 9 to 10 we're having our own, our, our Dr. Arlene Spann, she's going to come in and uh, talk about um, diabetes, oh, okay. you know, for the first hour. So, and I was trying to get the canning class, but we, you know, we didn't Couldn't get, get it, that done. Time to get. Yeah. Everything. And while I'm here, I want to say, um, I also like a donation from, the t um, from a, you said a basket for the Christmas, um, for Christmas Day, oh, if okay. it's possible. For, okay. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so Great. much, mm -hmm. and I um I want to thank you guys so much for your support and helping out us <laughs> for some, uh, December the twenty fifth because I'm, I'm, we are expecting a lot of people this time because we are using transportation, so we mm -hmm. are expecting a large crowd this year. Okay. okay. Thank. Anybody you. else have any questions or comments for Garden no. Club? Um, thank you for your volunteer. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, is there a green team um, report? Oh. Um, yes, Mayor, there is a green team report, and I may need your help and the council help to give me that report because um, yesterday I was a little under influence um, <laughs> of Benadryl, but um, I'm a little better now. Um, so I want to thank Pepco, um, Cody. Um, since Pepco has came into our town to try to eliminate some of the trees, they have really been working with us 
with the town and the green team. Um, last night, Cody was there. We had um, about 10 trees that, that um, town property that PEPCO has took identify and they have removed them. So you may see some tree stumps laying all around. If you need them, you can um, have them for your fire and wood. So PEPCO has uh, removed those trees and they gave us trees that were, or, that were um, I wanna say friendly trees. Um, oh, they call them energy friendly en trees. Energy friendly, energy friendly trees. So what we did last night with the green team and, some, and a lot of residents, we went over and we trying to decide what trees that will be in, in, the, in the spaces that um, they remove the trees. PEPCO will be coming in the spring to um, plant those trees and we are very happy with the selections. Okay. And also, yes, we wanna thank Kim Knotts because she's our ma master garden. So she was able to um, really tell us about the certain trees and about the leaves. And we do have copies of the trees here if someone's interested in looking at them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also wanna thank um, Paul Hall is one of our green team members. He couldn't be here tonight. So that's why I'm giving the report. Um, he really came up with some great um, projects that we can do here in the town of Comer Manor and sponsored by the green team. One of the things he would like to do is to host a green team meeting called Clean Air and Healthy Homes. Um, this particular event was hosted in Langley Park last night. Um, so we're hoping to reach out with the contact um, persons that have it here um, in our town sometime in April or May. Right, I'm keeping up with it, right? <laughs> Trying to keep myself. Yes. Um, he also introduced us to a 17 for Peace, Justice, and a local environment justice organization. That is also another um, organization that we want to collaborate with, uh, with the town of Comer Manor and the Green Team. We will not have a meeting in December, um, but we, we do have a couple of um, <laughs> residents that have donated well, PEPCO is taking down their trees, but they wish to not have a tree in their property. However, they're allowing us to have the tree in town. So the green team and the mayor and council and any resident that's willing to help us out, if you can identify a place that you would like a tree to go, uh, we would love to hear from you. Take a picture, please send me a copy of the picture and maybe we'll have a tree planted there in spring. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, there's no meeting in December but our next meeting is January the 8th, and one of the things that we talked about uh, with everybody's running for a county exec, maybe having some type of them to come to an intimate setting with the green team from Comer Manor and Carter City, just to see where they are with um, healthy living and the air competition, the air, right? Yes, yeah. right. environmental issues. And environment issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not sure if I missed anything. Um, Yes, yes, we did talk about educating the citizens about a asthma and how the effect it is with the, um, the air quality. And that comes in play with the air, the clean air and healthy homes that we're gonna have a representative come in April or May for that one. And like I said, ladies, please let, if I missed anything, please let me know. <laughs> and he opens the door for all the citizens that would like to come out, come out to the meeting and attend also. Oh, oh yes, I'm scared you said something. Uh, we're we're playing a contest that with the stumps. Good. Good. Um, the tree stumps that's laying around. Um, we we peeled up some pictures and stuff, and people are doing amazing things with that. So we have one of our residents, which is Kurt. We kind of put him like in charge of it. So we're hoping to have a contest. So I hope to be able to give you more information at our December meeting, okay. our December town meeting. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And I, and I just want to add about the tree stumps um, that will be left. I'm really excited about this uh, contest because if we can have a lot of really creative done, things done with these tree stumps around the community, community, we could be known as a place where people come just to see the beautiful tree stumps. And so um, I'm looking forward to that, uh, us actually getting that done. I think that's going to be a really fun project. Anybody, any other questions, uh, Green Team? Uh, we're always looking for more members, and we hope that 2008 is just as great as 2017. All right, right, <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so the next item is the recreation report, um, which would be Council Member Belton. 
Um, I already made comment, which I'm sure she would have been, about uh, uh, the Harvest Fest. Um, I can't think of, I don't have in front uh, of me the date our, of the Christmas, Christmas thing, December the 16th, from December 4 to 7. Mm -hmm. And we're asking for donation for toys for kids. Last year, the community really came out, and we were able to give, give out 100 toys. So every child that left here and some adults did walk away with toys. Um, if you want to donate a toy, please bring it up to the town hall and give it to Renee Watts. She's our recreation coordinator. We have a box in the hallway, toys for tots, for toys, anyone mm -hmm. that wants to donate. Mm -hmm. And cash is always accepted. Thank you. Uh, and we, we're also having vendors um, at the event. Um, so if you want to come, uh, if you want to be a vendor, I think it's $20. Um, it's a good opportunity for people to purchase from um, local people for their Christmas items. Mm -hmm. So please consider being a vendor and then also please consider um, uh, buying from that vendor when you come to the event. And uh, we look forward to uh, everybody coming out. Uh, I think I wanna say um, I enjoy the, the event. Our planners try to make it fun for the kids but also fun for adults too in a lot of ways so if you're an adult you can come too even if you don't have a kid with you and come out and enjoy oh, uh, the Christmas party. I'm glad you said that Mary because at our um, Harvest Fest we had a lot of seniors and they yes. just came up and they really enjoyed themselves. They sure yes. did. They really did. They really and, did. I yeah. mean just to be so there. Was good. Just to yeah. be there it was a good it was a good thing to do. Um, so, um, is, oh, okay, count, well, just, why does it still say Councilmember Jackson? Um, PTCMA, <laughs> Prince George's Municipal Association, Councilmember <laughs> Mendoza. So um, the PGCMA will have their next general body meeting, and that will be in the town of Bowie on Thursday, the 16th at 7 p.m. Um, the legislative dinner is coming up, and that will be in Greenbelt, in, on December the 7th, if, um, and that will be at Martin's Cross, Crosswinds. Mm -hmm. If you would like more information on it, just um, go to the website, and that is thepgcma.com. All right, that's it. Mm -hmm. that's Thank it. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, any citizen comments? Mm -hmm. No, just to, um, she just wants to say something. because you know the we're planning our cultural international day on January the 13th. So this is all new. So if you'd like to, we need volunteers, or if you participate. want participate, to participate, mm -hmm. just call the town hall, or okay. you can call me 301-801-8660 and email me m Mendoza at Comor Manor dot org we'll thank you <laughs> all right thank you and that brings me to the thought of reminding everybody out there if you haven't turned in your contact form yes. please turn in your contact form and let us know what's the best way to communicate with you because um, monthly on cable is not necessarily the best thing yeah. uh, sending out mailings and even bulk mail usually with the newsletter even if one person in the household sees it that doesn't mean everybody else in the household is going to see it mm -hmm. but if we know how we can communicate with each and every one of you in the household then we can um, get information to you quickly and and to that point I, I want to say a couple of things because um, what we'll be doing is we're going to con we're going to constant contact and with constant contact, we'll be able to send you an e-news alert weekly. And therefore, we're going to share with you what's going on right now. And for instance, I got this newspaper this week. It's the uh, Prince George's Post. Most people aren't reading news anymore. Come on. This is what it is. But it still comes here. And this talks about take advantage of important uh, state and local tax credit programs. And they have here the homestead property tax, what I spoke to you a minute ago. They got use the assessment appeal process, Prince George's County renters property tax relief supplement, Maryland state loan debt release credits, um, transfer tax exempts for classroom teachers and, and policy duty shares, Maryland renters tax credit program, homeowners property tax credit program, um, 24 month residential lease for seniors, 
um, dis disabled veterans tax exemptions, survival, spouse, a fallen officer's tax credit, alternate energy tax credit. If, if I had access to all of you and constant contact was set up right now, I would have just taken what I got right here and made yeah. sure that everybody had knowledge on each one of these credit programs and where to go. Mm -hmm. And so I want to really make it that mm -hmm. easy for us to be able to communicate with you at that level. And, and so that's the one of the reasons why we're really trying to do that. Um, I also want to mention what I read in here was something very interesting is that, as you guys all may know, that African Americans' um, um, life expectancy um, is shorter in a lot of different communities. And um, this report states that there's been improvement in the mortality rate of African Americans related to diabetes and obesity in the last three years. And I know that that's associated with a lot of some of the things we're talking about with the Green Team and the Garden Club and the things that Kaiser brought to us about how the environment impacts people. But also, I want to say this. I think it has an awful lot to do to universal health care. And I don't think enough credit has been given to this idea or concept. It's not universal health care, but to Obamacare, if you will, which is not quite there yet with universal. But mm -hmm. the fact that we had that care program that allowed more people to get health care. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so as people are trying to destroy that, I, I think those statistics are really important. And I, and I just really want uh, to say uh, thank you. And also, anybody, um, December the 15th is the deadline for open enrollment. Um, you can go out on the uh, uh, Merlin Health Exchange um, and go ahead and sign up mm -hmm. and, and, and stay um, insured. And there's lots of options for different people. Um, I want to say something I missed that was important. This month we did some, we had some employment changes and um, I'm very happy about. Um, Kayla Cooper, who you all may know, we have promoted uh, from secretary to senior um, administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. And we have um, promoted Yolanda um, Barrett from uh, the helper position. We hadn't even given her a position. She just came to help. But we've given her um, the position of administrative assistant. And we've hired Lily. How, 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 um, as, and I'm sorry, Lily, if I got that wrong, um, as um, assistant, uh, assistant administrative assistant. And with that, I am thrilled to say we have now four employees who live in the town of Colmore Manor. And um, that is an awesome way. We've got Ronald Austin um, who comes in and works after the events um, in the facility. Um, now we have Lily. We have Yolanda um, and Renee. And, and Renee, we have. So that is just the awesome thing to have your own residents being able to pay them, who are taxpayers, paying back. And, and so I'm really, I'm really excited about that. And the last thing I'm going to say, I hope there's a lot of people who will enjoy this, but we got a phone call about two weeks ago. I was hoping and you'd say that, man. I <laughs> yes. was just going to say that. I had Great. to leave it for last. I'm so happy. And, um, the phone call, the person answered the phone and he said, it's me. Yeah. It's, it's me. me. Mm -hmm. And so Yolanda had answered the phone and she said, excuse me, oh, oh, Redskins. You know Redskins me. It's me. And so finally she says, no, I don't. And she, he said, it's Ronald. Uh -huh. And we're so excited. <laughs> I hope you guys know, and I know there's people who are watching who knows Ronald. And Ronald would ride around here on the bicycle with the Redskin flag and the U.S. flag and his hat on his head and all this Redskin perianalia uh, for years and years. And this community, um, this community protected Ronald. It didn't matter what color you were or who you were. Everybody looked out. We all knew Ronald. And so he was... Um, he was so excited uh, to talk to me and, and say that, you know, that he's missing people. He's looking to talk to uh, certain people. So I said, well, I'll give, I'll give Mike your number. He wanted to talk to Mike. And he was like, no, give it to everybody. 
I want to hear from everybody. Put it on the cable station. So if anybody would love to give Ronald a call or send him a card, we have his number and his address here at the town hall now. So please call up. He will be thrilled to hear from you. And um, that's one of the exciting things about yeah. Coma Manor and um, having a love for it. Um, which I do, and he does, and I'm so excited about it. Anybody else want to say anything? Um, just that Ronald was here, vol helping volunteer with all of our activities. So he's That's always right. was here. Yeah. And he would always come out and help with the music on the Harvest Fest, and, and he <laughs> said, "Bring me, send me many pictures, send me many, many pictures." You know, I miss you all. And um, we got a uh, a Facebook post from. Anna Hess, yes, and yes. Um, she again, uh, you know, spoke about how much she missed being here and and walking the dog on the streets and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm cherished by those thoughts of I miss her too. the, yeah, mm? yeah, I miss her too. Yes, we miss her too, and um, I just wanted to share that with you all. And and with that said, if if there's anything else anyone wants to say for the order, I would accept a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion as stated. Is there a second? Second at motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. All right.